Road to Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank. You are listening to Caring Partner. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Our guest is Nelly Twikong of Pauline's Cosmetics. Welcome. Thank you. Road to Success. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Why do you call it Pauline's Cosmetics and not Nelly's Cosmetics? Two reasons for that. One, I don't know, it would f I feel it would feel a little bit uh, narcissistic for me. <laughs> To call it my name, and then I didn't think my name was that cool enough to put it in a product. Yeah, it's Nelly is a very common name. Mm -hmm. Out there, actually, it's not a very common name, but here, everybody, my generation is called Nelly. And then I went through this in my head over and over and over. I was looking for a name that was um, easy and feminine, and I tried different things. I tried putting names together. Uh, then I was like, okay, maybe I'm just not creative enough. Mm -hmm. Then I just kept thinking of my mom for different reasons. One, you know, mom's it's like the backbone of all of us. And for, for me, she was more so that person. So I kept going back to it. And every time I'd think, okay, let me do something else, I would keep going back to that name. Then I was like, ah, <laughs> let me call it Pauline. It's simple. It's easy Hello. it's familiar mm -hmm. it has a meaning to it yeah. yeah what sparked the idea to start this business of cosmetics so i was in school in the states and i was around every time you know for example you go shopping and all that kind of stuff you'll see all these makeup products and there was always so many more products coming up and probably over 1000 makeup brands and before i went to the states actually i used to run a small cosmetic shop, a beauty shop, back in my home. And back then it used to be those things of um, when somebody's going maybe to the city, then the people in the salon would send for hair or they would send for, you know, ha other hair products and stuff like that. So I saw the gap. So I said, okay, instead of you paying the matatu to get you the product here, let me charge you the extra and I bring everything here for you. So since I already had that, I kind of already kind of knew the beauty habits of Kenyan women. Mm -hmm. And I sort of compared to it. And as much as it was still, the Kenyan woman was still very conservative when it came to makeup, mm -hmm. there was still potential because again, the Kenyan woman or the African woman is always looking so nice. Hair sharp, dressing, oh my God, you mm -hmm. know. So that was missing. I saw that as an opportunity. Okay, to start the makeup. To start the makeup. Your story is very amazing because you, you have a healthcare background uh, where you are a critical care nurse and then you also do, did research mm -hmm. on chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. How did you transit from being in the healthcare to making makeup or creating makeup? Having that background helped. It sort of helped to be able to do this. How? Um, because one, you have to know a lot of, like, let's say you had to study like a drug. You had to know what's in the drug and what's the side effect so that you can get something to counteract the side effect. So having that background was, was good enough. However, in an internal process, the shift was much more difficult because you've gone to school for X amount of years. Everybody knows, even in the village, even Shosho knows. <laughs> she went to Daktari. <laughs> even my own family, you know, when I was moving back, they're like, why are you coming back? Well, you know, stuff like that. So there's, there was a lot of personal conflict of how am I going to abandon this? Should I do it? Is it, what am I doing? What's wrong with you? Just be normal. It was a long struggle, even up to date. Sometimes I feel like, I see certain things, certain gaps in the medical 
field and you that want I to want to go them. and fix. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I will see certain things and I'm like, oh, maybe I should do that. I'm like, no, focus. You yeah. know. Tell us what projects you have. We have uh, what we like to call um, the must-haves in a woman's makeup kit. Uh, and we call them a must-have because some of these things are things that women, women use easily. So uh, we have lip gloss which it's um it's a dual gloss and the way i designed it was that it would have two different textures so one texture would be more suited for the day it's very glossy very moisturizing i put share but again my my healthcare background comes in handy here i put vitamin a and e and then share butter is just very moisturizing very nice for the lips mm -hmm. so we have four shades of lipstick um, that is a mocha this one is called a red wine posh pink and maroon five then we also have four eyeshadows and we put it in a quad um, that way we just felt like you know you could buy this this package and this is all you would need and the other design feature that I put into it is an underside mirror so that you know if you're on the go most of us need mirrors 24 7 mm -hmm. and also what I put into it is wand applicators and the applicators is basically four of them there's two but like one on each side um that way you don't have to mix colors so this one can this two you can use on each one so that you're not mixing them up um though we normally encourage using brushes um but we are in the process of making those right now but in the meantime that is available that is an amazing story, that you're just not thinking about you, you're thinking about the whole community. Yes. We must take a break, <laughs> but when we come back, we would like to know how you deal with competition, because this is a very competitive market, yes. isn't it? Yes. <laughs> you're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Our guest is Nelly Tuikong of Pauline's Cosmetics. Welcome. Thank you. Where can we find your products? So in Nairobi, uh, we are available in CBD. Uh, you can find us in a couple of stores on Kimathi Street, uh, Mamangina Street, uh, Mwindimbingu Street. We're also in Adams Arcade. Uh, we are currently also in uh, Mombasa, Nakuru, Eldoret and coming to Kisumu. What does it take to manufacture makeup? Right now, we are trying to make, to add the lipstick ranges based on the data that we've collected. So we sit down as a team and decide we need these colors and these colors and these colors and these colors. And we decide whether we want to do it still the same way. Is there something that we need to add to remove? What ingredients? Uh, should we remain with the same, whatever the situation, consistency? Then uh, I meet with a chemical engineer and we go through the, the production. So we do the production, initial samples again, and then we test them. And that's just basically just the color part. So it could be put in anything. It could even just come in a stick and that's it because you're just trying to get the product right. So once you get the product right, we have other people sample the product. You know, I can bring it to you. Actually, I should bring it to you next time. Yeah, you try out the lipstick and you tell us, this is what I like about it. So we gather all that stuff and we have something viable. Then now there's the packaging. Do we want to stick with the same packaging? Do we want to change it up? So it comes we say, okay, this is good. Then I have to go back before we, they go into production. You have to pay the down payment. They get into production. You have to do quality control. Actually, you have to do factory inspections. Then we do quality control 
after, before and after it's done. And what is the response currently for your products? So the reception has been really good. Uh, most people have really embraced the idea and the concept of a Kenyan-owned product and, um, and they've been good with feedback. Like for example, if somebody got a product that maybe did not turn out exactly the way they wanted, what they would say is like, let me try this other color. And with that, it gives us an idea of what we need to work on. Um, so the reception has been really good. And again, the, especially the lip products, the lipstick and the glosses, people like them because it's, it has moisture in them. So that has been really good. How do you deal with competition? Because this is a very competitive it is. world. Because there's so many local, local uh, manufacturers who are doing the same thing, cosmetics and international. I, I normally like that question, actually, because one, first of all, yeah, composition is there and it is hard um, and it is scary. This is how I look at competition. When you're in a market segment where there are other people who need the same product, you know, um, women want lipstick. People will always wear clothes. When you're in, a, in that environment, trust me, you know, you're not the only person thinking about it. And if you're going to invent a very unique concept are very different, not, never been heard of before, chances are you're going to fail because there's a reason why it's not there in the first place or it will be just that hit, you know, it'll be like landing on the moon. So I have accepted competition, it's going to be there because chances are all these other ideas that I'm thinking about, you know, smaller batches, somebody else has thought about. And so it's for me to figure out how to set myself apart from everybody else. As an African woman, what lessons have you learned being an entrepreneur and being in business for the last, what, three years? Mm -hmm. Having something, a process, whatever it is, whether you're singing, whether, whatever it is, is having something to calm the self-doubt. We've been told that we are meant to be in certain places and we already have so much that has been put on us to, to, to tell us you can do this and you can do that. I've had to learn my self-esteem from, you know, when I was much older. And can you imagine bridging the gap of, I don't know how many years to say, I can do this. So that is the biggest thing is self-doubt is the African woman being like, can I do this and fighting society. First of all, you fight the monster in, within, the enemy within, and then you have to fight all these doubts on the outside. With that being a challenge, like the self-doubt, I have had to learn how to quiet my monster within. Then capital being challenging. Um, one is actually with my generation, we were not taught saving. We weren't taught a lot of that stuff. So that was tough. Um, and so actually running the business has helped me learn personal finances and just finances in, in general. Um, and then just being able to access capital, you know, it's, it's a woman business and a lot of people don't believe in it. Like you, you take it to, and sometimes even now they see the product, it's a running business and you try to show somebody it's like, the business is running, um, it's not an idea, it's not in my head. I have it in paper, in a building, in a store. Uh, but <laughs> the idea of like, hey, it's makeup or something, I, I, I've found that being an obstacle, but I have learned to know how to counteract. Again, I watch those women, they're tough, and they don't take no. So, so you continue, go back, exactly. go back, go back and say, yes. I'm not giving up on this, no matter what. And you know what I've learned? Everybody did that. Everybody got a no, and they had to learn how to keep going back. And then now just being brave enough to go back again, like to show your face up again when you've been told no five times. You know what? I believe you. I believe you and I can see you doing it. Thank you. And we'll be there to support you all the way. I appreciate Anytime. Appreciate. Yeah, Nelly, thank you. Thank you for being on our show. It's really a privilege to hear your story. And because you, you do inspire a lot of people and you continue inspiring a lot of people. Thank you.